Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> How are you? We're gonna have a slow, a slow journey to work today, I'm afraid, because we're stuck behind this massive lorry that's wending its way st stupidly down the country lanes here, forcing everything coming the other way to reverse back into a lay-by or up someone's drive to get out of its way. But, uh, unless it turns left up here. If it turns left, go on, turn left. Let me just, hang on a second, I'm just gonna focus all my psychic energy on getting this lorry to turn left. It's not, is it, is it? It's slowing down, it's slowing down, it's slowing down. Yes, it's going left. And the car in front of me is going left as well. Weber Transport Limited. Weber Transport Limited, if you're listening to this, WV68 Bravo Whiskey Lima, what on earth business have you got of going down the tiny country lanes like you are? Anyway, so we've speeded up considerably. Get me, huh? Get me, look at me. Can you spot anything different? Can you, have you noticed anything that's different? Yeah. I've got a meeting with my lab, which is not because I, I don't feel like I need to dress up posh because I'm going to my lab, but I feel I need to dress up posh because I'm going to my lab and I want to make a certain, I'm not doing it for them, I'm doing it for me because I want to project a certain image. And turning up look like some scrappy anorak is uh, it's not desirable is it really? It's a tangible quality indicator how smart you are. So, how are you? Yeah, how's things? How's it going? How are you getting on? How are you doing? How are you progressing through life? Oh, I hope they haven't shut this road again. I keep forgetting. Mind you, they don't tend to shut it until about nine o'clock. So I might be all right, even if they are. They're just resurfacing it, by which I mean they've got this machine that sort of drives along the road and just puts a tiny skim of some black tar on the top and a few bits of stone. So, and then the uh, drains and everything get lower and lower in the road and all the manhole covers and so if someone who rides a motorbike then, you know, stands a good chance of going arse over you know what. So, um, yeah, so what are we going to talk about today then? Well, oh, there's plenty to talk about. There's, uh, you know, I'm going to give you an update on the Brexit, what's it, just for historical, not long, not long, but just, you know, where we are, in my opinion, and what I think is going to happen, which is going to be a laugh, because you'll be able to, you know, say, you know, Derek said, old angry said X, and it didn't happen. Uh, I've got, uh, as I say, I'm going over to the lab, because I'm going to go and have a look at implant work from their point of view. I must remember to take a gown so I don't get covered in plaster. Um, that's and it's all you know good fun. I've got a nice afternoon planned for myself. They're over in Maidstone, so they're a bit of a trek. But uh, anyway, come on, let's just get let's just get started. So let me just start with Brexit, and then I'm going to go on to patient charging. You know how to charge the patients because that several issues with that have come up recently, which I think you know might, might be worth discussing and trying to get some feedback on, or just passing on my experience but uh, we've got to the point now where the, all, the um, Parliament has decided to uh, hijack the uh, parliamentary timetable which is normally is a courtesy given to the government that the government should decide what Parliament must vote on um, and uh, the government has this luxury of being able to dictate the agenda and also to a certain extent you know um, tell their own party which way to vote and if the backbenchers don't vote then they stand a chance of losing the whip and and uh, and because most people vote for parties rather than personalities if you you know if the conservative party disowns you and puts a, another conservative candidate up against you at the next election the chances are unless you're very well known that you're you're going to lose and independent MPs don't really get very far so that's what makes the backbenchers vote in the way that the government uh, wants. And then obviously you've got a large parliamentary payroll, people like uh, ministers, junior ministers, uh, secretaries of state, people like that. And they 
they must vote the way that the government uh, says because they are the government. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't be a member of the government and vote against the government. So they would just, they literally just lose their extra pay if they don't, uh, and not to mention, uh, you know, stand a chance of losing the whip and everything. But at the moment, you know, for the first time in about 500 years or something, we're in, or 300 years, it's, it's a free-for-all. And it all really started when Theresa May gave the, uh, the um, House of Commons what they call a free vote or, yeah, a free vote on uh, uh, various issues to do with leaving the European Union. And um, since she gave them that free vote, they've sort of acted like they've, got, they've now got a permanent free vote. So, <laughs> and you know, people have been resigning from the government to vote against the government and uh, some people, you know, like there's about 70 people, conservatives, who are voting uh, against the government backbenchers, and that's because they're, they're not in any jeopardy because they're in leave constituencies and they are voting leave, even though the government wants them to vote in favour of the uh, the May deal, which is basically, a, as uh, Nigel Farage says, it's sort of a, a Remain treaty that's worse than the treaty we're in. So they don't care because they, they're pretty sure they're going to get elected. In fact, the, the MPs who are in trouble are the ones who are from uh, Leave constituencies who are tr frustrating the process and, and in, in Parliament voting Remain. And there's a majority of MPs are in favour of remaining. So, so although uh, there was a general election and all their manifestos said that they were committed to honouring the result of the referendum and they all said that they would, when the push comes to shove they're all not. So, of course, the public is extremely disaffected with uh, the government in the parliament. So they're going to have a series of what they call indicative votes tonight, which is basically that because they can't get May's deal through parliament, they're going to try and ask the MPs what, what they are in favour of, you know, because it's much easier to say what you're, what you're again than it is to say what you're for. So the... Um, but the government said that, you know, they can't be committed to anything that might come out of the indicative votes because... Um, it, uh, they can't commit themselves to something sight unseen and also that it may be what they call unnegotiable. In other words, with the default being that uh, in the absence of Theresa May's deal being approved, we are going to come out of the European Union on uh, April the 12th on WTO terms, which in my opinion wouldn't be so bad. And um, so, so even if they voted for, I don't know, a second referendum or there's no time for anything, you know, this thing, this thing's been dead for several months if you, if you knew what you were looking at. So there's no time to organise a referendum, there's no time to even have a general election or anything before we come out on WTO terms and so it's all boiled down to really coming out on WTO terms which I, a Parliament won't vote in favour of that. It might happen by sheer chance, by, by default, by fluke. <coughs> but um, they've, they've twice voted against leaving with no deal and yet they've got no deal to leave with. So, so they're voting against heads and they're voting against tails. So, and that's why the public's so disaffected with them. They, these people just don't seem to have a plan, you know. They left Theresa May to come up with a plan. Her plan was a, a dead duck and so now that we, we, we've got no plan and no time left. The, the clock's run out. So the uh, the uh, the Brexiteers, or the so-called hard-line Brexiteers, the one that just want us to leave uh, on WTO terms, are really are saying that the, the only choice they've got is um, is to vote for Theresa May's deal, which they've always uh, rampantly said that they wouldn't. And or or accept an extremely long extension, which would be tantamount to not leaving. Um, I <laughs> see. I don't think they can get a large a long extension because the European Union is thoroughly sick of us. Which is why, when Theresa May went to Brussels to the recent European Council meeting to ask for an extension, they didn't give her the extension that she wanted. She asked for about three months, and I think they gave her. Uh, 14 days, you know, from March 29th to April the 12th. And I think if we go back and say, look, no, we, we haven't been able to get the deal through, but we'd like another year to think about it, they're just going to say no. And then that's that's the fluke, I think, that's going to mean that we're going to go out on WTO terms. Um, uh, the alternative is that uh, 
uh, you know, enough people uh, vote in favour of May's deal that the EU is happy, and then they'll then give us till May the 22nd to just implement it, um, which I think would be a disaster. You know, I mean, it's certainly my least preferred solution, and has been rejected twice by the Commons May's deal. That's also been rejected twice. So the deal has been rejected twice, and and the what and the, you know, so my that's my my dream scenario is that. Uh, the MPs in their indicative votes decide that they want to uh, go f go for an extension, and you know, in in the in the <laughs> Panglossian uh, optimism that they'll they can step in and say, look, no, step up to the European Union. You know, we're negotiating this now. Everything's going to be okay, and the EU is going to say, oh, well, thank God, thank God, Parliament's taken over. <laughs> but I don't think they are. I think they're going to say, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> so anyway, charging now. Um, charging is a. Uh, I know it's a bit of a jump, you know, but we've got to do something dental, haven't we? I mean, on the face of these old dental podcasts. So we had uh, some interesting uh, questions about charging yesterday, and in uh, in fact, one of the um, the. Bit, one, the, the patient that I'm going to talk about is a patient who came in. She was sort of, uh, I'd say, an elderly lady. She's in her 60s or 70s, or the early 70s. She's got um, a lot of trouble, you know, um, several teeth sort of broken down to the gum, some some decay, well, some quite extensive decay, really. She's got two crowns, which are pretty well uh, got, got a lot of oh, got a lot of decay in between them and, and where the teeth will probably be lost and basically she came in and she said I just want lovely teeth you know I want lovely I'd, and she's quite prepared to have them all out to have full dentures to have lovely teeth um, but I said to her really you know dentures full dentures are, are just going to be another problem you know you just, it's not no problem they're just a different problem they're just the next best thing to having no teeth they're not a substitute for your own teeth so anyway I said um you know and they always say well what what uh, you know what do you recommend and, and so I then say to them well, what I recommend is going to depend on where you want to get to you know do you just want to be out of pain do you just want to fill up a gap do you just want to be able to chew on both sides do you just you know have you got a wedding coming up do you want to look good in the wedding photos or you know what we recommend is entirely flexible and depends on what the patient's objectives are so here we are, we've got a woman in her early 70s who, who wants really nice teeth. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just uh, all, all the disease are fixed and fillings done and root treatments done and extractions done and crowns done and etc. But she actually wants the step above that, you know. Um, and she's got a big problem cosmetically because she's got no papillae left because she's got this, she's had this sort of chronic, you know, this sort of very flat chronic, uh, gum disease that people get when they, uh, you know, they've they've um, they're sort of uh, you know like smokers type gum disease where you get like uh, uh, like that that bloke in uh, on the buses old uh, uh, what's his name anyway Jack Jack the uh, Clippy <coughs> you won't remember that um, anyway um, so. I said to her, like, you know, I said, if, if you want to, like, if you're asking me to do, you know, what we can from a technical and, and a cosmetic point of view, as much as we can, you know, you're going to need a budget of about £10,000. So, and she said to me, yeah, well, I've got that. That's all right. I've got that, you know. So, I mean, the, 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 young, the young angry, the young angry, <laughs> would have, the inexperienced angry, would have his heart would have just missed a beat when when someone said something like that it would have gone you're in mate you're in there you know? <laughs> the older more nuanced experienced uh, uh, moderate angry uh, tends to go you tend to go oh, oh she really does want it done you <laughs> know she really does okay okay so but it's nice you know I mean when you've been in the practice 37 38 years and you know you have seen people you go to conferences and they say look we took this person and they were you know they look like Quasimodo and then we we ended up with them looking like Marilyn Monroe um, you know how often do you get those cases you don't get those cases very when money is no object you know 
it's very tempting to say to people and the thing to say is I say look this is going to be quite expensive I assume that money is no is not a problem and if they say well you know now I'm doing this on a limited budget or money is a problem or you know I just can't afford it the, the, the people who've got the money they just say yeah no that's wrong money is not a problem you know money's not a problem and let's face it at 70 what are you going to do you've got like a hundred thousand in the bank what are you going to do with it you know so anyway she wants the teeth that she never had which is a, like a fairly common story so uh, and she wants to know roughly you know she's she's excited about this we uh, sent her off for an opg we've sent her off uh, I, i'm gonna do and i've and i've written a sort of a preliminary letter saying yeah you know we can this is something that we can do um but you know it will be staged it'll be staged because we don't uh, go mad and uh, sort of get you in like and do all the treatment and then, and then in the like Ed Silker's approach and then two weeks later fit it all and that's it goodbye I mean we should probably we should probably do that but we don't so um, so anyway uh, she brought back the, the results of the OPG so we sat down and we, we chatted her through the OPG because it's good because she can see and I'm just saying I'm just pointing out to her and I said see that dark spot between those two teeth that's a load of decay so and she sees this you know patients can see this and uh, so all the time we're sort of building up a bit of trust a bit of confidence a bit of humor thrown in and um, at the end of the day you know she said look I trust you to do whatever's necessary and that's that's what I do I always say to them look I don't know I'm not telling you what to do and I'm not saying I know what's right for you at the end of the day that's your decision but I all I can do is tell you that if these were my teeth this is what I want someone to do to me you know this is this is the treatment plan I would formulate for myself if these were my team and that's without telling the patient that you know better than them what's best for them that is a nice way of uh, especially for those patients who are sort of quite incapable of making decisions and there are there are patients like that then that's a nice way of just sort of saying to them if you follow this advice then I think that's the best advice um, and so fair enough and we costed it all out and we've done, you know, she's got some uh, gaps in the premolars. She's got some molars that we can, you know, uh, possibly save. Some some of the, you know, when, when you've got a budget like that, it's, a, you know, sometimes when you've got like a premolar that's uh, been root treated and is flat with the gum, perhaps they used to have a crown on, which, you know, gets in between the lines because there's none of the root treatments missing. So I'm guessing it was some sort of pinned core on a, on a root treated tooth then it gives you the um it just gives you the confidence just to see if you can't you know possibly get another a post crown in that you know even though it might be a bit subgingival uh you know what why not what why not try and do you know you do um you have to revisit your treatment planning when you've got a case like that because it's so easy to say yeah well what we'll do is we'll make you some dentures perhaps some chrome metal based dentures and uh nice and light what the Americans call clipping bridges and uh, uh, but before we do that we need to have a clear out of all these teeth so we need to take out seven teeth and uh, uh, and then you know and a reline and you'll be right bosh 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 and then you've got a case where you're probably making about uh, two grand eighteen hundred pounds two hundred two thousand pounds or something and the patient's got dentures but she doesn't really want dentures you know she wants nice teeth um, and by nice, I mean nice to the point where she's already got some crowns on her upper upper incisors, on post crowns, and but they've all been done at slightly different times, so they're all slightly different colours. And for most people, that wouldn't even be an issue. You know, for me, as far as I'm concerned, they actually didn't look too bad. For someone who's 72, you know, when they've got these really really white regular teeth, you're thinking, well, those are dentures, aren't you? You know, they don't look they don't look right. They look false. Um, but that's what she wants. She wants. She doesn't like these sort of actually what I think are quite natural looking crowns that are all very, very slightly uh, wonky and slightly different shades. And um, she wants. To, she wants to be able to go in and, and beam at everybody, you know. So anyway, um, we. Uh, what I did was I said to. Um, I said to her a lot, you know, just. And these people, they Some people are so good, you know. She reminds me of when I used to work in Whitstable, where. You know, if, if the patient owed you five pounds, they would 
and they didn't have it on them, they would go home a mile and then get a five pound note and bring it back, you know? Um, and and so she's like, you know, well, well, how soon can I start paying, you know? Do, would you like a deposit now? When would you like a deposit? Or what, what, do we, what do we do about a deposit? So I'm like, so I said to her, we, I've inherited a system that I inherited from the, my, the predecessor, the guy I bought the practice off, which is that when people are having a reasonably large case, I mean, in his case, it was sometimes it was 20 or 30,000, but a reasonably large case, then he would give them a 10% discount if they paid in advance. And uh, that is mainly for cash flow purposes, and it's also really perhaps it encourages people to, um, you know, to proceed if they think they're getting money off. Which is, I mean, that's a decent chunk on seven thousand. You're giving them seven hundred pound discount, so that's quite a decent chunk. Um, so you do have to. And, and, and the thing is, I mean, she probably, if I hadn't said that, she probably would have just paid it anyway. And um, we've come in three thousand under budget. So she's she's sort of quite happy. Although I did stress that it, you know this is this is a complete initial treatment plan, you know. But if you look at it like this, I mean she's going to, you know, that that included I don't know something like eight crowns and a bridge, and um, you, you could argue that someone who's having eight crowns when the crowns are five hundred and seventy each. And they could argue that if you're having eight of them done, then you could discount those crowns anyway, because you're doing you're doing them in bulk, aren't you? I mean, you're um, you're you're you know you've only perhaps got one lot of uh, one visits and one lot of impressions, you know. Um, so uh, you know, so so saying that you could cut seven hundred pounds off it, it's not when you're charging full price for everything without any discounts, then it's probably not such a bad deal, is it? And then also, I mean, you're, you know, as, as time goes by, we're probably gonna find that she, uh, that, you know, there's gonna be something, things are gonna get added on. I mean, things are gonna change. They're always gonna change. So I'm quite happy with that. So uh, she's coming in today, and I think she's gonna pay 6,300 or, or thereabouts, you know. And then plus, if the treatment if the uh, uh, treatment plan changes for any reason, then I'll come back to her and say, look, as you know, you know, you've you've specified you want I don't know this instead of that, or this tooth broken, and so we need to do a bit of extra treatment, and then and then we'll charge her for that as well. But we're still coming under the ten, so that's that's quite a flexible approach to pricing. But um, and the other thing I would say just in closing is that. Um, um, what I do is uh, I sit in front of the computer with them and I type it in I just type the treatment in and the prices come up yeah so basically it's not it's not like me saying to I'm gonna charge you this I'm gonna charge you this the computer charges them I just type and say look this is what you need I'm gonna I'll type it in for you and then it comes up and then I say right and there's the price 7300 you know uh, in total and that's not my I haven't but the computer's done all that is that's that's the price you know so, so that's quite a good way of doing it. And also, um, you know, she'd come in, she'd brought the, she'd brought the um, uh, X-ray on a CD. That's just the way that they insist on sending it to us. Um, and uh, we sat down and we had a chat with her. I think she'd had a scan and polish or something. And then she'd come back out. She paid for the scan and polish. And then she said to me, like, you know, what, now you've seen the X-ray, what do you think? And so I sat down with her and, and I sort of, I just, I just went click, crown, 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 bridge, extraction, root treatment. Uh, post 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 you know um, and um, and came up with this figure and said you know it's, it's about 7,300 and um, and that was great because she wanted that you know she wants to go home with um, an idea you know uh, she wasn't that bothered about what it was when I could have come up with 12 probably but the point was that things are progressing well from her point of view you know they're, they're moving along in fact, they're moving along so well. I'm seeing her today and I'm seeing her Friday and I'm going to see her every Wednesday and Friday until it's all fixed, which is great. I don't I don't mind that. And in the meantime, we've got some money in the bank to pay the wages. Ha! Happy days. All right. OK. Talk to you soon. Bye.